Having a serious FOMO right now, that's fear of missing out if you're above 30. <laughs> so again, and don't forget to visit the micro site at uwrf19.com. And the best part, because nothing is free in this world, once you're connected to the Instagram button on the micro site, you will immediately, your click will immediately be converted into points and then prizes. Like what, you may ask, right? You, my dearest, might score some common sense, common courtesy, hopes, dreams, love, poetry, maybe some free t-shirts here and there. It says so, it says so here. Before we start, I know I'm not that funny, I'm working on it. I just took workshops, okay? And all the TED Talk and masterclass.com, I'm working on it. Before we start though, I'd like to thank this one special person who helped make this event happen. He is very special. He is a love child of logic, innovation, and business, and the magical world of art. He's been a loyal supporter of this festival for years now. He's also the director of Overland Society, publishers of Overland Literary Magazine. So, let us welcome Sir Richard Llewellyn. Thanks, Alisa. I'm Swasi Yastu, Slam of Alarm, and good evening. A lovely mixed audience, and judging by the number of people here, you obviously think the Poultry Slam is the most important event of the festival like I do. Yeah. <laughs> we sponsor the Poultry Slam in honour of two friends, of great friends of mine from Australia, both unfortunately passed, Barrett Reed and Shelton Lee, Woo! who were both celebrated con contributors to the poetry landscape in Australia. They're both excellent poets, mentors and publishers of poets. And Shelton was also probably the greatest uh, poetry performer I've ever seen. He could walk into a bar full of dock workers in their blue singlets and he'd start to recite a poem and he would quell the whole bar. It would go silent and listen to this crazy man reciting poetry. So I hope tonight we have some crazy people reciting poetry that quells the bar. If you'd like to know more about Barrett and Shelton, you'll find some leaflets laying around the seats. Um, they're both great men who epitomise what it is to be a poet. And over, they're both involved in Overland, which was mentioned by Elisa. And Overland, an Australian literary magazine, has been around since 1954. It's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, literary magazine in the world. And it was a pioneer of online publishing. And so uh, you, if you look online, there's a link on the flyer to the website and you'll read some great articles, some great fiction, some great poetry and I encourage you to submit articles. I'm trying to get Overland to embrace Asia. Tonight we've asked a writer and poet who now lives in orbit all the way from Norway via the USA and Australia, Kim Wingery, to read one of Barrett's works, one of my favourite poems, Miss Porteous Stops the Party. And it's a rollicking poem about the artistic community in inner city, um, probably in the late 40s, early 50s. And the artistic community existed alongside the shady bars and the standover merchants and the red light district. And so it's a very interesting period of time in Australian history. Following Kim's reading, we get on with the slam. I'm looking forward to hearing some wonderful poems and some great performances. So welcome everybody, let's enjoy the night. <laughs> poetry takes many forms. The best definition I ever heard of poetry was I was reading some poetry to my eight year, then eight-year-old grandson a few years ago. And then at the end of it, he said, Granddad, it's like you're painting a picture with your words. And I, I can't think of a better, better definition of poetry. <coughs> Miss Portius stops the party. 
in Palmer Street in those days, between the tins and given a wide berth by the working girls, was the prim and polished boarding house of Miss Amelia Porteus, qualified chiropodist of Philadelphia. Cheap and clean. It's cheap and clean, she'd say, her little grey eyes, jumpy with the gin. And what you do in your own rooms, your own business, except knocking around the furniture or waking Mr. Wu. Those were acceptable restrictions, more especially as the shadowy Mr. Wu, being exiled from Dixon Street for some final offence, would drink a bottle of whiskey every night and fall neatly but noisily upon the floor. There were two signals. That was one, followed hard by Miss Porteous evening call. I'm going to bed now, dear. Glug, glug, glug. In bed now, dear. Glug, glug. At that, the front door was undone again, and girls and boys, frail creatures of the cross, would fly in and up the stairs to the top floor at the party. The girls with big black handbags full of booze, the room slept 20, give or take a few. What special noise one night awakened her, tore her from dreams of corns and cornucopias, we'll never know. The door crashed open and she filled the frame, gin lit and awful in her wrath. Queen of the May turned upon her elves and theories whose wings froze. Writers, actors and artists, you call yourself. Actors, artists and writers, I know you for what you are. Prostitutes, pimps and pufters. And the police been called for. Froze us. In and out of each other's arms. What stopped Great Bessie from singing again that night was our acknowledgement, silent but echoing, when terrible in red dressing gown and wrath she left us, that while actors, artists and writers we may be, there was a certain truth in her accusation. Thank you. on the job, so I, I'm still figuring it out. So, um, I'm here to introduce you to our judges. One of them is Sir Richard, just now. Um, Kadek Sonia Pistrianti, as one of the judge. Uh, a writer, a theater director. Huh? Come on, give it a look. Come on, guys, come on. Me out here. She's also an author of 11 Mothers, 11 Sages, and 11 Stories. And then we have Andy Craven Griffith, poet, a playwright, and the Glastonbury Slam champ. Aww. Okay, so I don't want to bore you. Let me give you the amazing, vivacious, badass chick, Melanie Unungur Williams, 2018 Australian Slam champion, your host of the night. I, black woman, don't want to be just another black woman standing up here talking about black women's issues and how black women are seen as second-rate citizens in my country because we are black, because we are women. But here I am. Because when I gave birth to a black girl, I realized how important it was that she grew up in a world without fear. You see, black women are already birthed into society fighting for equality because of the colour of our skin and the genitals we're born with. Born with two strikes against us from the very beginning while white boys with privilege arrive already winning, it's a race. Neither of us have entered into, yet you're born with no strikes and I'm born with two, strike one. 
I'm born with a target on my back. It's a target of default simply because I'm born black. I'm a statistic that says you'll get a degree before me and while your babies will strive and thrive, educated well throughout their lives, mine will fight to survive. If their lives aren't first stolen by suicide, I'm a statistic. That puts me in prison before you. I'm a statistic that says I will die sooner to strike two. Girl. Targets all over her. My heart breaks to think that men will always try to fuck her and chuck her, hit her and quit her, wolf whistle, cat call, grope her and abuse her. And this behavior is acceptable because she's a girl. This behavior is normalized in this messed up world. She becomes one in five women sexually assaulted or threatened. And because she bears the heirs to your thrones, then her pay wage is lesser. Now I try not to be political. I try to keep my mouth shut. After all, that's the role of a good black girl, right? You're kidding, right? We might be born with two strikes, but we're far from out. Black women all over are an uprising nation, a force to be reckoned with, to be seriously taken. Our resilience comes from deep within, from being born with two strikes from the very beginning, but turn the page and see how the ink has bled through from the blood of black women born with two strikes too. Their strength, their legacy, their fight lives on. Two strikes couldn't stop them. Black women are a weapon. Mother Earth kept secret. So on that note, let me introduce you to black woman, double threat. Tonight. Um, I'm Melanie Munungur Williams. I'm a Japa woman from Northeast Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory, Australia. It's not that far from here, only about an hour, 40 minute flight. Um, and it costs cheaper to come to Bali than it does to go and visit my own family in Arnhem Land. So I'm really, really honored to be here tonight and um, want to just thank the Good Writers Festival for bringing me here and, um, and all the organizers of tonight's slam for allowing me to be here and be part of um, of this wonderful event. Right, so Poetry Slam. Who has been to a Poetry Slam before? Hands up. So a few of you. So most of you know what the rules are. It's basically um, your voice, the mic, and three minutes to tell your story, right? So um, there's four judges tonight, as we've um, already been introduced to the first three. The last one will be chosen randomly from the audience. So, hands up to anybody who would like to be a judge. Right here in the front. All right, great. Now judges all have their scorecards. Yeah? All right, great. So, just for those of you who aren't sure, every poet who comes up here will be judged with a score from 0.0. .0 to 10.0. All right, so make sure that you, when you're scoring, you're scoring to the decimal point. So for example, 7.9 or 9.9. Um, just so that we don't have any confusion too much with scores at the end. So, the, you have three minutes to perform your poem tonight at Two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear this sound. <laughs> there we go. At uh, three minutes, you will hear two dings. And at three minutes and 10 seconds, you will hear three dings. And that is when we start deducting points. All right? So it's one point per second after three minutes and 10 seconds. So it's really, really important that you try and stick to the time frame. Also, when you come up on stage, the minute you engage with the mic, your timing starts. So try to avoid saying, hi everybody, my name's Melanie and I'm here to do it. Okay, because then your time starts and you lose about five or 10 seconds. Right, no props. You can't bring, you know, like, your pet dog and an umbrella. You have to come up just yourself, a piece of paper or your phone or nothing if you want to memorize it. And um, and yeah, perform your poem. Uh, I'm just reading out the rules, don't mind me. Each poet will be drawn at random, so there's no order. So you don't know if you're gonna be first, last, somewhere in between in the first half, second half or whatever. All right, so without further ado, to give the the judges an idea of 
their scoring and to kind of get in the field because it's not easy being a judge, right? It's really, really difficult to judge people who are up on stage. Um, we have a sacrificial poet here tonight. Her name is Cleo. She is from Unspoken Bali Slam and she will be our first poet for the night to be judged. Please, warm welcome to Cleo. <laughs> One day under the bridge. One day under the bridge, I was dancing, singing, and playing around. I danced in a puddle, jumped up on its middle. The splash was so humble. I see to the shells, to the crabs, to the snails. I play around with my pepper bow. It innocently followed the water flow. Do you think it's fun? Is it fun? One day under the bridge, the little streams hide themselves under the corals as I had something beside this expression. I dance while crying, I play around while crying, I see while crying, I cry, but not really crying. I dance in the bottle, splashing the sorrow, hiding the tears that forced to go out of my eyes. So if they ask me, why are you crying? I can, I can only say, uh, <laughs> No, this is just a water splash. I sing passionately. Then my tears stayed calm in the edge of my eyes. Because I don't want to be called as a loser. I don't want to be said as a loser. Why should be fake to make us closer? Our body were together, but not our mind. I used to climb up the wall between us, although I know I'm not myself anymore. Should I stop? Should I continue? Those eyes full of underestimation. One day under the bridge, I realize, I realize sometimes one is better than two or three or four, even five. One day under the bridge, I realize that always me who can appreciate myself. Thank you. Yes, our first poet of the evening. Hey, can we get the judges to give us some scores? So just so everybody knows, um, Cleo was a sacrificial poet, so she's just performed for us this beautiful poem to give the judges an idea of, you know, getting into the swing of, of, of judging. So, scores, judges. We have a 6.5, an 8.8, .8, we have a 6.0, and a 6.2. Can we get a round of applause for Cleo? Okay. Let the games begin. Can we get a drum roll? First poet of the evening is Robin. Selamat malam semua. Who of you has ever been bitten by a mosquito in Jakarta and contracted dengue fever? Okay, that's less. To give you an idea what it's like, this is the next poem. Shake the flakes from your hair, Jakarta. 400 years of old skin withers like dry leaves. Black water flushes out of your heart, but the prayer begins. Are you awake? Are you steady on your feet? I'm soaking, I'm sweating like mad. There's a 
beggar floating in the air, Chris Busaka standing on its tip, is pinching little holes in my skin. It little red dots appear and start to itch. Go check, shoot like chichak lizards for your veins. Your cells fill up with sunlight, fill up with ashes. The blood flows faster and faster. Lamp, scalpel, needle, Jakarta! The doctors look at you worriedly today from behind their mouth caps. There's a cockroach sprawling on its back, its little paws in the unforgiving air. I'm gecko, gecko, nearly coughing up as the floor and the ceiling are spinning in opposite directions. Tiny soldiers with lizard tails are creeping past the paintings. Jakarta! Stick out your tongue like a hopeful patient. Jakarta! Stick out your tongue as a sign of life. Every room is a waiting room. You and I nodding at one another kindly, getting ready for the big operation. Hati hati Jakarta. Lalu lintas macet. This is traffic jam, cardiac arrest. This is your heart frying on the concrete. Machines grinding your brown teeth. Do I hear your ancestors moaning from under high-rise tombstones, still groaning about the old days? Dulu, what do? Kasian, I wrap myself into a banana leaf and try to sleep. My skin's feeling weak, ants crawl in between my toes. They lift me up and carry me into the steaming volcano. Jakarta! I'm trying to hear your voice between all of the rumble to fill my lungs without coughing. All of that dust in my mouth. Red flames burn in my chest and with every stroke of the gong, my flesh just shudders with every stroke of the gong. My flesh just shudders with every stroke of the gong. I shudder. <laughs> Judges, we have an 8.9, an 8.2, we have an 8.0, and a 7.9. Round of applause for Robin. on some new dirt. Also, finding a really, really hot place to lessen my fat. I have really a lot of fat here. <sighs> so, I put my belonging on my back. Uh, belonging, you say? Now, just this. Yeah. Let me go. <sighs> but Potter, You'll all oblivious to every happiness that you have. Now, Gandalf, I will pass. I'll pass the ordinary. Yeah. And then, from Bandung to Yogyakarta to Surabaya. Oh, Surabaya, you're hot. You're interesting? Um, <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. Beach, beach, beach. You have to go to the beach, 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 beach. Took another card, took another card, and follow the noise. Beach, 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 beach. 
Just keep going, just keep wondering, just keep going, just keep wondering, just going to the south for a couple of hours, and then met, um, yeah, I met the, what do you call it, the fragrance, the new fragrance, no, the water fragrance, the water fragrance, and from there, you go for a couple of minutes and you go to a really overcapacitated boat. Yeah, it's really big and it's really dangerous. But yeah, why not, right? <laughs> and then will be happen something good. But yeah, in this boat, everything can happen. And I don't have my rose, and I'm not a jack as well. So, go to this boat, join, and even the sun. No, when you me, boat. Welcome to Bali. Judges, are we ready to score? It's really hot day today, right? And I'm all sweating out there today. It's even hotter than Darwin. All right, we have a 5.5, a 7.9, a 4.7, and a 5.0. Thank you, Bertie. You can always click. I can't. It looks like this. Um, or, you know, mm. <laughs> sounds in the audience are always nice. All right. Anatar. Anatar? Yep. All right. I'd just like to start by honouring this land, the people and all the creatures of this land and Earth Custodians past, present and future. This is my prayer for the planet. A wild warrior woman was born into a skin in a time and a place where she didn't fit in. A soul of the ancient born ahead of her time in this pivotal moment where all things would align. So she turned off the news and denounced her alliance to a system that promoted violence and compliance and turned her attention to what she could gift and what was her role in this consciousness shift. She knew the problem was complete separation from the source of what we consume in its final destination. If we could only... Sorry. If we could only witness the destructive processes that bring us plastic wrap packages and five dollar dresses, we'd surely be horrified by what we discovered and how many crimes against the earth we uncovered. This planetary dance that sees the sun rise without fail, an intricate biomatrix of infinite detail, when plants and praying mantis hold the key to creation and the extinction of one species can mean the death of an entire nation. There's a tree in Africa called the Queen of Trees and its life is dependent not only on the bees, but a delicate dance, a symbiosis of species, where the sprouting of a seed depends on another creature's feces. And what about humans? We're removed from this train. We shit in the water, then it goes down the drain. And what happens after that? Well, that's not my responsibility. Someone else deals with that, so we lose sensibility. I vow to live a life where I don't compromise on my values and beliefs in order to survive. I've carved my own path, live my life for a living, and the more I'm devoted, the more it keeps giving. Because for me, I can't imagine a life in the city with dead air and water, that lifestyle I pity. Because there's nothing more alive than drinking water from the source to climb a coconut tree and sip the nectar of life force. So to the politicians and leaders, before you pass a bill to tear up the country, to ravage and kill, spend a night on the land that you plan to condemn, drink from its waters, sleep on its soil, and then tell me if you still believe the land is not alive, nothing more than a commodity to exploit so you can thrive. But how will you survive when the earth says no more and anything you blindly trusted to feed you before will no longer be an option and the matrix will burn and only then will you have no choice but to return. 
to the source of all creation from which we all came. And this reality we're seeing now will never be the same. When does rain, rain cease to be rain and become the cloud? Or when does bark become compost when it falls on the ground? You can make no distinction as it's inseparable from each other. Like a child in the womb is inseparable from the mother. Humans are no ex exception. We're intrinsically linked. And if we don't respect the cycle, we'll soon be extinct. The time is imminent. We have no more chances. The tree of life is dropping its branches. So let's turn this around and radically revive the earth to a paradise where all life can thrive. Alright, judges, are we ready to score? We have a 7.1, a 7.0, a 5.2, a 6.5. Alright, round of applause for Anita. I apologise in advance. Romy. You here? Romy, are you around? Oh, is that you? Ca yep, coming down. Right on. Dari Jakarta. Terima kasih Tuhan Ya Aku puisi Tercipta Dari tiada Menjadi ada Oh Ya Aku tercipta karena cinta Dari maha cinta Oh Allah Aku berterima kasih Oh Allah Aku Bersujud padamu Tuhai sahabat Jangan bertengkar Jika bertengkar Dunia ini sansai Mari berjabat Dunia ini damai Come on Come on Come on Ciptakan kebahagiaan Mari saling mencintai Ya, berbahagialah kita Berbahagia Karena karma itu indah Terima kasih Halo, oke, okay, I'll take this one Alright We got a 7.1 We have a 4.5, we have another 4.5, and a 7.6. Round of applause, please, for... Uh, oh. Switching. Alright. Yeah. Fami. Fami, are you here? Uh, again, I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. All right, here comes Fami. Perkenalkan dari Kalimantan Selatan. Catatan berlarut senja. Oh, 
Aku saksikan sungai yang menggeliat merajah tanah-tanah kelahiranku yang menimbun banyak riwayat bersama daun-daun labuk tergusur akar sawit bibit harapan yang disemai moyang dahulu tak pernah tumbuh tersiram air mata peradaban sementara orang Orang di alir muara Berlomba membangun pencakar cakrawala Membuka rahim hutan Menabat sungai Menyambung punggung-punggung jalan Untuk lalu lintas zaman yang kian kejam Menyingkirkan penghuni pedalaman Aku tulis catatan perjalanan berlarut senja Mengkaji setiap kayuhan di perahu hidup Sampai malam menyusul ke langit kota Menutup riak-riak percakapan di tepian seribu sungai. Terima kasih. Thank you, Fami. I'm so lucky. I have Lisa sitting next to me, who's able to translate the poem as it's being read. So, yeah. All right, scorers. We have a 5.0. A 7.0, a 4.5, and a 7.1. All right, a round of applause for the last All right, the next poet is Michael. I know I'm not going to get that wrong, at least I don't think. Michael, are you around? I wrote this poem over three years ago and then I set it aside. I discovered it recently hiding in my Google Docs. It was then I realised its time had finally come. It is called The Superb Generation. When a superb generation arose, it was not immediately apparent. There were no fireworks, for instance, no great proclamations, just the intimate, tremoring circumstance that something, that something had changed. For a while, we ignored the insistent humming that came from we knew not where, or a great cadenza, perhaps, resounding in the bowels of the immortal earth. We were deaf to everything, sublimely ignorant of the coming storm, a cataclysm. Of course, the years went slowly by. They needed to grow, these strong, passionate provocateurs. How they chafed at the bit, almost choking on the bland lies, the feeble doctrines which we fed them day by day. Such excrement. But they survived. Of course they did happily congregating in huge numbers, blocking the serpentine traffic of our dying insinuations. They would not tolerate, no, they would not tolerate the reckless tourniquets, the twisted impressions we offered them. There was no hope. What we had called civilization and its politics disappeared in the twinkle of an eye. The lithe bodies of our youthful saviors loomed above us. All was now lost, but for them, a new planet grew, green and untainted in the mellow air. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 
judges, are we ready? We have a 7.2, a 7.2, a 6.5, and a 6.7. Round of applause for Michael. Right. The cup is getting empty. Carissa. when love moved through me. It went on day after day, stopping how I do it all their way. From the bottom of my spine to the tip of my head, a pain I've never known before shook me and said, question what it feels like to live dead. From that night on, I began to shed at the speed of sound, deep layer after layer after layer, until I reached the surface of my skin, revealing treasures buried deep within. Suddenly a snap and a shatter of distorted glass, clearing shadows of the past. Secrets held in my spine truly began to unwind, singing a song called Freedom. I love to sing all day long, but my idea of freedom was wrong. To move, to dance, to walk, to prance, moving my body, moving through life to life in this life, is that what it's like to be free? I forgot, again, about what true freedom really meant to me. The core of the seed in the sea of it all has and always will just be. On the nights I couldn't move, loved, love moved through me. Once again, I was broken open so I could see, illuminating my dark nights with such sights. Buddha, Jesus, Kuan Yin, light after light. I mean, other people might feel a fright. Not me, not again, never, especially not that night. Nothing stops a woman who learns how to navigate boldly through the inner and outer worldly. Heaven in my head, heaven in my heart, forever channeled into art. During those times I couldn't move, that's when love moved through me. I guided my awareness past my pain and found an inner stillness that will always remain. Freedom is a song we've been singing all along. Thank you. We have a 7.3, we have a 6.2, we have a 5.5, and we have a 7.2. Round of applause. Okay, MJ Castro. MJ, great. Back in the day of kings and queens, when riddles spilled from the mouths of their storytellers or entertainers, and they began to tell the stories of loves and lovers, so copious, full of life and desire, like the bodices bound to the bosoms and the corsets of the beauties of the, from the days when the world was grand and thick. Like the velvet blood red drapes which swept the floors like today's days of Disney's dreams of grand illusions. Their stories consisting of lovers finding their one and the same. 
I've often wondered what that would feel like. Then I met you. The way our bodies move in an unsung harmony is as fluid as river over the rocks from days that are older than our souls. You have a knack for tapping into the center of my core. Unknowingly, you banged your fist on the center of my soul like the prisoners who were held for stealing bread banged their chains against the thick wooden doors with the black iron locks which held only their good intentions. These are the same wooden doors with the same iron locks you and I have built around our hearts, our minds, our truths with the cerebral idea of an illogical protection. Yet somehow you and I managed to blindly find the keys in the haystack of our hearts longing to forego our imprisonment from the iron locks which were antiquated with craft and measure. You and I built who we are and the love we share upon our toothpick tendencies of our own insecurities. We know with complete conviction for as long as our head traumas continue in relation to our concussions of things we cannot control. The time that escapes us as the ticks of the clocks run like the thieves who ran while stealing bread. Our bond or our union will last through its true perfection and we will remain safe. To say we are a storybook would be a far cry from the truth, but being with you makes my disillusioned mind come to life. You are so vivid, raw, and real as we step into the orb of energy in which God created with only the one, two of us in mind. Like a tenacious experiment of two broken souls who find solace pouring a hushed, thick concrete into the cracks of the other. We have been etched into the belly of the universe in the clay cliffs built from our imaginary mountains sliding into the sea. You and I can no longer ignore the sounds of those banging chains or the iron locks which have now been strategically opened with the thick snap of the bolt unhinging. Those prisoners bore their initials or their names as not to be forgotten or left behind in time just as you and I have etched the same into and upon the other. As I now look at the world no longer in black and white, but oh so much gray. I feel lucky. It is a rush. You've shown me the beauty of being with a sense of longing. You are the drug and I am a junkie. The way you kiss me, the way you draw your fingers over my skin as you pull me in closer it makes my mind think this must be what the poets who lived in the palaces contemplated in their cloaks of creativity. As the ink spilled from their quelled pens, I am yours. All right then, judges, we have a 7.4, we have a 7.1, we have a 6.5, and we have a 7.8. Round of applause for MJ Castle. Okay, city, city. I met an accident a couple months ago. My pride has committed suicide. It was such a grief for me. I met him first time on the news. Rainbow flag waving, it's an event yet emotions. A protest yet celebrations. Once a tragedy, yet a house of music party. It's a silent moment every time I tell mom, my partner is a handsome daddy. She might be jealous of me. My pride was indeed a state of confusion. My pride was always wanting acceptance, yet wondering what piece of clothes I'll go for a party. My pride has been jailed twice a week for letting the world know I love rich, my ex, in every spoken word. And it still feels so fucking hurt. I call whatever hurts me as a pride though. I love my pride the way I love mango sticky rice. My pride has committed suicide. I sent a guy a high, a policeman, someone to help me investigate a corpse of my pride, an autopsy of shame. They only can be built brick by brick, generations by generations, bridge by bridge. My ears wouldn't listen to whenever my mom wanting me getting married with a woman. I better marry my favorite mangi, mango sticky rice, mom. The stickiness just fits best to my yummy tongue. 
My pride has committed suicide. Prejudice has taken over. It has been following me to the grocery store, picking up what matters on my table, under my bed cover, in the kitchen, what's inside my underwear. My pride has committed suicide until now. I still can't marry the prejudice because it doesn't really exist until it does. It doesn't really matter until it kills you the way it told my pride to commit suicide. Hi, pride. I'm okay. I'm okay except for your death and the prejudice that has been following me to my family house picking up what matters. It has been following me to the bathroom looking at me when standing in front of mirror, sneak into my blanket, dim the lights of my dreamy nights. I drove it to the closest graveyard and finally killed it a couple months ago and was kind enough to bury it under my positive notes on Facebook. But the comments were against me. They spelled some mantras from Old Testament still. The prejudice raised up to my bed from the graveyard, ping me a high from one inch away to my skin. Fucked me roughly, feel so good. Just the way muscular cheese man does in a porn video over and over again. Last time I checked, doctor told me I'm soon giving birth to my pride. Thank you. We have an 8.5. We have a 7.5. We have a 4.8. And we have a 6.6. Round of applause for Sydney, everybody. The Fight the It's called I Will Never Write Again. <laughs> Hear me when I say to you, I will never write again. Drag my rotten name across this hateful earth, but please give me not the pen. You can shred every ounce of me, steal the shirt up off my back. Just don't ask me to scribe a thing, for I am not your hack. You can bathe me in your banality like the babe you say I am. You can make me crush a thousand rocks like the slave you think I am. You can cage me like an animal, deep down you know I am. But I will never write again. Writing is a desperate act reserved for the truly free. It's safe for those who no longer care for human decency. It's the deed of degenerates, degenerating, forgotten souls, redemption seeking. Those no longer beautiful, never beautiful, the misfits, the ones unfit to bear the burden of everyday existence. The ones unable to gather even the lowest of hanging fruit. Don't you dare make me ever write again. For writing is an undertaking so loveless it's savoured only by the scorned. For those condemned to live and die in damnation alone. There's no joy to be scratched out of it it's too hard, it's wraith too deep. I'm begging you please, don't ever make me write again. As I stand defiant in this candid hour, hear this you must. Only one transgression greater than that of writing, and that's misplaced faith in God we trust.
Yes, and that rat bastard left me behind on this squalid plain, like a dead man stranded in oblivion, no longer seeking fame, no castles to storm, no maidens to conquer, not even a worthy foe for me to joust, left me with nothing but idle hands and a sordid love of words. So write I must. Dear God, I will never write again. Thank you. Yeah. All right, judges, we have a 7.5. We have a 5.9. We have a 8.5. And we have a 6.0. Give it up for Damien. Anion. Anion? I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Anion. within God, before only God, who are you? You are me. We are immutable, immaculate, immortal, immeasurable, illumined, perpetual, limitless, divine perfection always manifesting itself. Ka, Aum, Lim, El, Ether, Void, Eon, Gaia. We are a unity of spirit. We are whole within our rainbow shield. In beauty it is finished and loved. Siapa Aku. Akulah Tuhan, di dalam Tuhan, menghadapi hanya Tuhan. Siapalah kau? Kau adalah aku. Kitalah. Kesempurnaan yang suci, yang amat bersih dan kekal, yang tak berubah dan tak terukur, yang bercahaya. Dan terus menerus selalu mewujudkan diri. Ka Aum Lim El Ether Voi Yon Gaya. Kitalah aman dan utuh di dalam pelangi pelindung yang mengelilingi. Diri kita dan terkunci dalam keindahan Kat, Wang, Asyik Terima kasih Terima kasih Terima kasih Alia Alright, judges We have a 7.6 We have a 6.9 a 7.0 and a 6.4. Round of applause for Annie. I'll tell you what, it's hard work getting up and down. My glutes will feel it tomorrow. Sepno. Sep Sepno. I'm so sorry if I'm saying this wrong. Yep. So. Great. Karma illuminates our life. Everything that happen is karma, like a lotus flower that will bloom, then but maybe it will fall through. Life or die, problems or fortune. Do not dissolve in sadness. Don't cry. Do not regret it. Because life is karma that will always spin from the bottom up and will come back down. Is not karma like that? Is not karma like that? 
is not karma like that? Ya, yeah. karma like that. Karma will come suddenly, and karma will always illuminate our life. Thank you. Thank you, Sukna. All right, judges, we have a 6.6, a 5.4, a 6.0, and a 4.3. Give it up for Sukna, everybody. to make some noise when the poets are performing too if you like what they're saying. A click, which I can't do. All right, Zan. Zan, are you in the house? All right. Perfect, yeah, thank you. So it's really great to hear some rhyming poetry tonight because I love rhyming poetry. And um, I read one time that Isaac Dennison, who wrote Out of Africa, was saying that she read the Swahili poetry to the children that rhymed. And they would say, don't stop talking to us like rain. And I loved that story. So I'm gonna read you a rhyming poem. And um, when people say, be yourself, I think they should really say, be yourselves. And that's what this poem's about. It's called Range. It becomes most obvious when I walk into a store that part of me's a lady and part of me's a whore. I start at the suit rack full of corporate gray that I'm on to the hot pink push-up bustier. I know it's confusing, especially to men who label me as one thing and then I'm someone else again. Yet it's not my intention to tease or mislead. I just don't fit in one box or come from one breed. The truth is, I've got a lot of folks inside and no one seems willing to shut up and hide. There's a focus business sort, a teenager gone wild, a black woman with an attitude and a sensitive child. I've got a disciplined jock, a slob that's not, a serious planner, and a monk that grins a lot. There's the bitch that sends shivers down everyone's spine, and then there's the lover that's leading most of the time. Sometimes they all gather the community of me for an important decision or just afternoon tea. It can drive some people crazy, fills me with delight. I've got at least a dozen lifetimes of material to write. And I'm back to the shopping, I'll let you all guess. Who do you think picked out this spandex red dress? A 9.0 and an 8.0. All right, All right, we have one last poet, and then we have a guest poet on after this person. So uh, next we've got Janice. Permission to what? Permission to not take the lemons and make lemonade. Permission to not be okay. Permission to give my best foot a rest and not put it forward. Permission granted to not put on my happy face. Allow me to be sad. Sad in itself is not bad. 
Sad is one of the beautiful emotions at our disposal, given to us to express how we feel at any given moment. It is natural to feel sad sometimes. So, permission granted to not turn my frown upside down. <laughs> permission granted to not find the lesson in every circumstance. Permission to say, this sucks. Not everything has good in it. There is not always a teachable moment. Sometimes things just suck. Yeah. Permission granted to not join you on the mountaintop. Times in the valley can be just as valuable, just as valid. Maybe the valley is the place where I'll be restored. The safe place where my tears can freely flow for the losses felt. The place where the unsaid can finally be said. Maybe I don't need to see things from another perspective. I can see them just fine from down here. <laughs> Permission granted to not move on. Let me be, let me process. Let me figure out how to live another day with this thing forever a part of my story. There are some things in life that cannot be erased as if they never existed. Your well-intended encouragements and suggestions could possibly be more about you than about me. Because you cannot contend nor comprehend a not strong me. Currently on pause, you want me on fast forward, but give me time and I'll be the one to press play again. Permission granted? From who? From me to me. From me to you. From you to you. Permission granted. Thank you very much. teacher, filmmaker, come on down to, to give us a, a poem before our break. to read uh, my poem uh, out of my book anthology, Burning Hair. My hair, my hair. My hair, my hair flew to the air. My hair, my hair the flame to flame. pulled out from their roots you dragged me out from our home people watch people got mad but nobody helped my hair my hair my only hair my only dear lost in nowhere my hair, my hair, my only hair, where do you find a fine chair? Your destiny is not to sit, but to flow in the air. So fly away, my hair, my only hair, 
Another day you pulled my hair again. People watch again. People got mad again. They did not help again and again. I called the police, he came eventually, but he blamed me. He said, I was a bad woman to a man. I cried, but nobody cared. The one and only hair, the dare to be bare hair, the last hair to be fair in the air. My hair, my hair. Just be hair, just be there. My hair, my hair, my only hair, my only hope lost in despair. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. All right, everybody, before we begin our second lot of poets, we've got a five minute break. You can purchase food and drinks over here from our wonderful host venue. And um, I will see you again in five minutes. You'll hear my voice over this microphone. All right then, go rehydrate and fuel up. to be treated like a princess, has taught me how fun those roller coasters and this flirtation and waiting games were, has made me way less judgmental and enjoy the process of getting to know, has taught me that if you met someone who makes you laugh, then he's a keeper. Loving you has not made me tired of proving myself and keeping up with one's pace. I can be who I truly am because you made it so easy has made me realize the on that honest conversation is a treasure. It is so pure and rare when both party parties are not trying to impress each other. It has taught me that size doesn't matter, skill, uh, I mean feeling does. Has taught me those physical things have nothing to do with what, what is actually within. Has taught me that if you're looking for perfection, you'll die trying to find one has taught me how perfect you are with all of your imperfections. Has taught me that vulnerability is normal and that shows you are human. Loving you has made me know myself better. Has taught me to be selfless and not selfish. Has woken me up at 3 a.m. in the morning because you need an input for your presentation. It has made me realize you lead, but you also give me freedom. 
has made me re realize it's not about having time, it's about making time. Again, it's not about having time, it's about making time. And then, loving has taught me everything becomes more valuable when it's gone, has taught me sometimes it's too late, that karma is a real bitch, has taught me to forgive and move on, has taught me to let things go, has taught me to sometimes timing is not right, you cannot rush things, has made me experience thing called the one that got away, has taught me to get my shit together and start all over again even if I'm so fucking drained. Loving you has made me screaming sorry for causing the very misery and begging you, please bury the worry. Has taught me that second chance is rarely given, so don't blew it. Loving you has made me fly 7,000 miles with a slight chance for reconciliation. Has taught me some wounds cannot be healed, it stays. Has taught me to get hurt and it's not the end of the world. Loving you has taught me that people do change even the slightest abusive act is not okay and I got to walk away from you. Has taught me outstanding resume means nothing. Loving has taught me when it's done, then it's done. Loving has made me accept sometimes it's not meant to be. Loving has taught me faith that no matter how failed it was, how painful it was, how disappointed I was, there will be another beginning. Give it a week, a month, a year, four years. There will be always a new beginning and new learning. Maybe God still has a learning curriculum and I will embrace all the ups and downs, the sadness, the happiness, the acceptance, the rejection, the nicest, the ugliest, the longest, the shortest, the hardest, the easiest. Loving you was never a waste of energy, was never a waste of time, was never a waste of pain. Thank you for making me the way I am now. Thank you to our first poet of the second round. All right, our judges. We have a 6.3, we have a 6.1, a 5.5, and a 4.2. All right, just a reminder about the rules, guys. Three minutes, yeah? After three minutes, 10, you start to lose some points and you get your dings, all right? Just to remind you. Okay, next up to the microphone is Jesper. Do you have Jesper? Hello, my name is Jesper, and uh, this is my poem called Caught in Thoughts. I'm thinking a thought. The thought that I think is that I'm thinking a thought. I have to pee, I see. That's my thought. I think it's a thought. Me and my thoughts. I'm thinking, it's just a thought. I think, what if I don't think? I'm thinking. Then I will be free of my thoughts. It's a thought. Is everything a thought left from another thought? In my room, a spider is spinning its web over my head while I'm laying down in my bed, connecting one thread to another thread, leading to the next, creating a maze of threads as its home, expanding, not stopping, keep, keep producing the next and the next and the next. Does it ever stop to think a thought? Interesting thought. <laughs> That was the first thought. What was the first thought I thought? I think after thinking the first, the next thought, I must have forgot the first thought. I think. I have to pee. More. I have thought that before. Haven't I? But this is a new thought. Before two different thoughts, I have thought two identical thoughts. The previous thought I have forgot. But it was a thought. I think thoughts. Am I my thoughts? I think so. So why not stop thinking thoughts? Think about stop thinking. Think. Help. I think. I think I need help. I feel trapped in that thought. Caught. In my head. 
in my own spider web. Thank you. myself, I will never understand women. When I, when I hear somebody saying, you all men are the same. You are so cool and ruled by your diction. Yeah. Well, it's true some of us, but not all of us. So don't point that finger so quick. I do see some of the bloodstone in the clubs. Pinching girls' asses, tribe intimidating, making absent passes. Man, she's a goddess. You can tell her by the way she dances. But you cool a slack when she don't accept your advances. Well, you just show you got no belief in yourself. You ain't, you get, you ain't got the ball to just talk to a girl. So when she chats me, you speak and shout her. Well, it's written in the art of war. To fight only a battles that you can win. But I will defend your honor until they kick my face and you can scrape me up, broken bone, bad bro, fuck it. Integrity is what black eyes are fainted for. So down with a dictatorship that's so cocksure because they use rape as a weapon of war. Mm. Fuck the man who thinks it's okay to give his wife a punch. Fuck the judge who said she was raped because she was drunk. And if you're a pro-life, I mean if you're actually a pro-life, then become a doctor or foster a kid, make it possible for people who live to live. But don't you dare tell women what they can and can't do when it was a woman that gave life to you. Yes, I'm a man. Yes, I'm a man. I guess a typical one. But I ain't afraid. I think a woman are beautiful and strong, too fat, too thin. Men, they just me your spin. You look best when you're comfortable with your own skin, so I'm sorry if I made you feel undo. But the truth be known, I mean all of you. You're a giver of life and a warrior too. But do you really need five different bowel shampoos? <laughs> Oh, at the back? 
Just make sure you make some room for our hunter to get through easily, hey guys? And don't forget, you can always grab a drink. Our hosts, Beetle Nut, have put on a great service this evening, so it's always nice to, you know, reciprocate. Hunter? Ah, here we go. Thank you, Hunter. Strip club. Here in this strip club, we're the seductive maidens of phenomena, undulate in the lap of our inconsolable loneliness. Right here in this painfully waxed theater of affection, we paid far too much to get into. We call out to you, exaggerate this groping impulse. Engulf us so deep in this fog of fantasies and pheromones, the whole universe starts to slide naked around the brass pole of our spine. And our hearts finally become pathetic enough to reach for the hottie that straddles both sides of our skin. Both sides of our skin. Right here, where the perky breast of pride waves uncomfortably close. Right here, in this factory of manufactured tension. Please help us relax, drool deep, deeper, past these prudish and filthy thoughts that coat like sticky glitter your timeless immensity. until finally we see it. We are all single mom psyches, just trying to get by, strutting our stage name, until finally the ultimate sugar daddy emerges from the thumping haze. Oh, beloved gyrator of all G-string personalities, what better place than right here to repent for our one and only sin, insufficient lust. We have a 7.3. We have a 8.3. We have a 7.0. And we have a 7.7. .7. Round of applause for Hunter. for the punks and the drunks and the straights. This is a word for the interconnected, for the sunbeams and the moonbeams, for the heathens and the believers. Create. Create something. Create, any, create a feeling. Create anything. 
Make a gesture, make your bed, make music in your goddamn head, make a party cake from scratch and ice it with colour and sugar and things that look like other things. <coughs> Do something. Make bad choices. Learn. Make a choice and choose to grow positive. Plant a seed. Plant a garden in the minds of your friends. Find a movement and jump on it and bring to it all that is positive, all that is active. Be active. Energy creates energy. Step sideways. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere where you are not known and create a performance so powerful it changes brain waves. Alpha the shit out of your fellow citizens so they too go out and create. Mobilise everything. In a zombie apocalypse, you're going to lose it all, so why not bet it now on the throw of a die? And if you're lucky, you'll lose. Because humans work best when we have nothing but ourselves. The underclass survives because it is inventive. Be awesome. Choose love. Create. Thank you. Create. And a room full of creators, I'm sure. All right, judges, we have a 7.4. We have a 7.1. Uh, 7.5 and an 8.0. Give it up for our last poet, everybody. Diddy? 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 I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Spelled D E D I. Diddy? Yeah? Can you hear Daddy? Sisipus. How can you hope on the wall of rock while life keeps it lumber? Push the rock to top up the hill overwhelm and pain keep on pressing clip and rock And rock, clip, and rock. Life crashes so hard. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. All right, how's everybody feeling in here? You all feeling good? Hello, it's up here. I don't get to see you very much. She's unblinded by the light. All right, judges. We have a 6.4, we have a 5.2, a 6.0, and a 6.4. Round of applause for Betty. It takes a lot of courage to get up on stage, perform in front of the audience. Steffi. Steffi, come on down.
research about bilingual reduced emotional resonance, which is basically a fancy term to explain why we bilingual kids switch language when we have to talk about pain because it transports us to another mental state where the experience doesn't sting as much. Reading it, I was like, oh, this is legit. So I retweeted it and asked it to my therapist and she confirmed it. But here's the thing. I was sure that I was made completely out of gado-gado before chef's bowl. Beras kencur and sinom before the overpriced Kale smoothie. The unyil and chips of operas after school before Netflix persistently asking me if I'm still watching season 12 of Criminal Minds, which I am. I am molded by my mama's loving flip-flop spanks when she caught me cussing long before it was considered as child abuse in West areas, I don't know. But I was raised in rice, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I was figuring things out, lives out in every bedjak and bemo trips. What I'm saying is every, you speak English very well, sometimes it sounds like an accusation. I swear this land and people will not ever slip away. What I'm saying is I wear Bahasa Indonesia like an armor. What I'm saying is sometimes just trying to figure it out. So when you texted me that morning saying kita nggak bisa sama-sama lagi. I wanted to say jangan don't. I wanted to say Aku nggak bisa sayang sama orang lain lagi. I don't want to love anybody else. I wanted to say, kita bisa benerin ini. We can fix this. I wanted to say, I do not want to unlearn the angles and shapes. I have to shift my body to fit yours. Instead, I reach out to this language, my escape plan. Build a fort out of it because I know inside, the burn from the bullets from your words will melt into spools of broken record. Goodbye. Instead, I typed. Okay, I typed, I wish you well. I typed, I'm sorry if I ever hurt you. I typed, maybe I will write poems about you. Ha <laughs> ha, smiley face. And while I'm mending my open scar, I imagine the words spinning, echoing in the empty war zone in our chest. And when they are done, like a wounded soldier, I will march back to my motherland. Love, love and heartbreak makes such good poetry. I read a t-shirt once that said, don't get too close, I might turn you into a poem. <laughs> Our judges, we have a 9.4. A 7.6. We have an 8.5. And we have a 8.7. Step everyone. Putri, are you around? Perfect. Putri, everybody. Am I wanted? That question emerged with the first boyfriend years ago when he lured me into fairy tales by serenaded me and later on forced me to give him my first time. But that's not the reason. The question emerged because I think he's the one who ever truly wanted me and I abandoned him. I also abandoned the next boyfriend who I know wanted me. He was super sweet. He didn't even try to rape me. But here's the thing about a sweet boyfriend that he's never enough. I guess since then the universe has stopped trying to give me a man that wants me. Instead, the universe gave me this swiping guru. You know, it's basically a human catalog with very bad copywriting. You have to be really good at Netflix and chill, which I'm not. I'm more like, oh my god, I met, I met a guy under a, a falling star. He, it must be the sign, he must be the one. Well, guess what? He's not. Am I attractive? I want somebody. I want somebody to be next to me when I wake up at 3 a.m. I want somebody to hold my hand when I'm trying to cross that tightrope up on the hill. It's bottomless sea under. I couldn't swim. 
And when I'm drowning, I want somebody to grab me from the water and breathe me out the, the air I've been holding inside for far too long because my, my first love didn't want me. You see, it's not even love that I want. It's just the idea of it. And as I stand in front of my mirror, my broken mirror, for an hour I try to put my makeup on and then I realize it's not the mirror that broke, it's the face. I'm traveling. I'm writing this in Lower Saxony around 11,000 kilometers from home. It's 10 degrees and a lot of German dialogues outside. I'm sitting on the stairs at the 17th step. It's 13 more steps up to my best friend's room and her husband and their new baby. And here goes my next question. Am I lonely? Am I smart? Am I funny? Does he like me? Do they like me? Do you? Like me? Those questions should not be matter. What matter is to not questioning them at all. Because my self-worth? Well, my self-worth is not for somebody else to decide but me. Thank you. All right. Is that the truth? OK. Judges, we have an 8.4. We have a 7.1, we have a 6.5, and we have a 6.0. Give it up for our last poet, everybody. consequence, your honor, I plead guilty to every affair. Here is my defense. In a world where most of the alphabets are rearranged, being repurposed for representation, revolutionizing a movement that calls to let us be free, free to be our wonderful and unique selves. I do love, love who we want, when and how we want. I feel there is a little underrepresentation for people like me. People who love, 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 love so much. I say, open relationship? You say, slut. <laughs> no, my love has always been too risky to be put on a page and sits there behind the bars of society's cage. I feel shame. Oh, how do those swingers look so cool, cool? Like the way you gaze at me, pierce through, and when I told you the truth, the truth that I struggle with monogamy, when I told you I don't love the same way, the same way that everyone assumes love, because that is the narrative that we are fed, fed the same hallmark philosophy, Concluding the happily ever after, after what? The end credits, the song, the last page, the I do's? Well, I don't. I don't consent to being told who and when and how to live, for how many times and for how long. Yeah. All the ways in which I can love, it's not something you could easily comprehend how well, my capacity to love goes above and beyond. To feel love, oh, so much love fills the depths of an ocean. I am no stranger to my emotions, but how many more? Access and affairs, is it gonna take to accept that not all relationships are a standard six ingredient gado gado recipe, free sized anythings, always make me look funny. We are infinite combinations of sequences altered by lived experiences, each an expression, a phenomenon of something never before. Is it so wrong for me to love another? I promise you at least it won't be your brother. Baby, I love you, I promise, but in all the parts I've set aside in loving you, there are parts lost, parts of silence, parts that used to love myself, parts I miss. This is not a phase that I will grow out of. Trust me, a jury of past, present, future lovers will not hesitate to attest to this. It's not an attention disorder. My psychiatrist assures me that I don't need those pills. 
this is not a hunger for validation <coughs> that what Instagram is for. This could be so much more than just eternal damnation, but a conversation to talk about our happily ever after. This could be an opportunity to leave behind all labels and limitation and set forward some new conventions. This could be a reminder that love, love comes in many shapes and forms as we change it does too, so why pick one? Thank you. Love. I love love. All right, judges, we have an 8.5. We have a 6.5, a 7.5, and an 8.2. All right. These things are... Okay, by you. Bayou, are you in the room? All right. Make way for Bayou. Sebelumnya, beberapa waktu lalu, kita semua merasakan asap. Saya selaku orang Indonesia, sangat-sangat minta maaf kepada Anda semua, itu kesalahan kami. Dan begitu banyak puisi ada di Indonesia, semua puisi dalam celana. Gak ada gunanya Mereka mengutamakan kayu yang ada dalam celana Berdiri Kasihan Saya betul-betul mohon maaf kepada anda semua Rimba puisi Rimba dikenangan api Puisi-puisi ditulis Meleku Gemulai menjadi warna pesta Bercak tubuh perawan Di babat Sebelum belukar Itu Tumbuh dewasa Rimba puisi Pesta pora Di buku-buku Kulit kayu Menjadi buku Getah kayu perekat buku 
daun-daun kering sampul buku Puisi-puisi memperkosa rimba sampai kaku Siapa yang bilang puisi sekarang memberi perdamaian Puisi hanya bisa memperkosa Rimba di gandangan api Puisi-puisi semakin seksi dalam antologi birahi Buku, sertifikat, piagam, pena, dan sederet penghargaan di dinding-dinding kaca Tidak ada gunanya Puisi tidak ada akar Tapi puisi itu membelukar Di dalam celana dan kota menjadi rimba. Terima kasih. Alright, we have a 7.5. We have a 5.5, another 5.5, and a 6.2. Give it up for our last poem, everybody. Poet. All right, we're down to our last two poets for the night. So, uh, Rion. Rion? Do we have a Rion? Okay. Hands together for Rion. Bugamphilia. Do not you ask one day what love is like because you can't be wonder or surprised if I answer love like bougainvillea that acts now its color events. It is a burning place and the most Beautiful karma. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. All right, judges, are we ready? We have a 7.5. We have a 5.5. We have a 6.0. And we have a 6.0. Dion, everybody. This is our last poet for the evening. I know it's sad. Uh, I could listen to poetry all night. All right, I'll you past my bedtime. Ufi, do we have Ufi? All right, come on down, Ufi. LGBT rates have become more and more commonplace in Indonesia. In rural, more conservative provinces, private spaces such as living quarters and hotel rooms have been targets of sting operations by the moral police. Raided. As we lay down on the comfort of these puffed up pillows, bare skin against white duvet, glossed by air conditioning's chilly sheen, the soft amber and hanging shadows of this roadside hotel, whispers of a cuddling curtain for the secret rendezvous. At hand, the room's key card, a bottle of poppers, unwrapped condom, body hairs across mounds under sun-kissed skin, buttocks slightly agape, man parts excite. We share tenderness away from public eyes. Four muscled shoulder that graze, buff pectorals that heave, chasing breathless, erect nipples under hungry gaze, and some other erect things too. Our room's door burst open, men in camouflage pants. It seems not the go-go dancing squad we rent. Enter ladies, headscarfed, screaming shrill God's names as we reflexively scramble to find our far-flung G-strings. They pin our hands behind our backs, the cold steel of handcuffs slicing our wrists. Doors in the room were ajar, but our bodies wide open as they sniff, mark, bag 
evidence, tissues full of semen, naked, were paraded like stray cows out of pack, agency out of whack. But this is neither fulsome, this is not pride, just zealous righteousness making their routine rounds. Ten muscle shoulders that graze, buff pectorals that heave, chasing breathless, erect nipples, under policeman tees, and some other erect things too. Riot batons, cracking protesting limbs, imposing indiscreet holstered handguns, clenched fists, but not as steely as humiliation, the ice-cold sweep of morality clauses suffusing a cornucopia of Indonesia's regional and national anti-rainbow laws. We huddle down on jail floors as chip as tobacco-stained teeth and missing integrity of public defenders. Our secret be known, heteronormative posturing blown. Families hide faces, neighbors whisper, aghast workplaces sever as they frantically wash PR smear. We disappear as we wonder. How strange a world in which what hurts no one is made to hurt everyone. what I should read and here's what I decided finally, something different. Um, it's called Ode to the Plastic Ocean. I'm a manta ray, 40 years of swimming these bays. Now my diet has far more variety, not just multicolored fish but lots and lots of plastic. I'm a green sea turtle, 20 years of floating along, nibbling seaweed and singing my song. And now I look so fancy and gorgeous with my new fishing rope accessories. I'm a clownfish, yes, those stripy nemos you see in the aquarium. Life in the ocean is not so boring anymore. Now I can swim and hang out with my bobbing bottle and drinking straw friends. I'm a humpback whale, 50 and still cruising the seas. Now why is it that I feel so heavy and lethargic? Could it be the heaps of plastic sloshing around inside of me? I'm a bottlenose dolphin. I'm still young at heart. I love to leap and play through and around the plastic hoops and bags of my constantly refitted ocean gym. I'm a young octopus in the prime of my life, looking for new company. I have big googly eyes and look real cool, especially now with my new clothing of baby diapers and plastic festoons. I'm a homo sapien, fit and tanned and strong. I love to snorkel and dive in the oceans and see the much enhanced coral reefs teeming with luminous fish and lots and lots of pretty plastic. Thank you. Thank you, Luna. All right, our last scores for tonight. We have a 6.5 and 8.6. A 7.1 and a 9.0. Round of applause for you, everybody. Okay, so before we finish, you're about to be wowed by Andy. Give it up for Andy, who's going to come down and perform some amazing poetry for everybody. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, 
This poem is about my big brother. I come from a family with uh, six brothers and sisters, seven of us all together, I've got six brothers and sisters. Uh, the oldest one is 10 years older than me, the next one eight years older than me, and he's about a foot taller than me as well. Uh, he's six foot eight, uh, he's a very big guy. Um, he can drink a lot, and this is a story of when I was 15 years old, and I went out drinking with him because I thought I was gonna be a man, and I was gonna be a big man like he was a man, and discovered that I was a boy. Um, and the, it's a strange way to bond that, that men have, that's a sanctioned thing to do. And it's become a nice memory that nowadays I kind of look back on and think it's better that me and him now talk to get close to each other, but this is when we first started getting close to each other with him being eight years older than me. It's called Raf. His name's Raf. We dominate the pool. First foreign holiday with all or nearly all of us. A dozen recumbent kinsmen loving the ovenly sun as it sinks in and makes us tender. Like slow roasting lambs, with relaxed, unclenched hands laid back on sun lounges. Shyla's taken her first steps on Spanish sands and tans proudest. Our pupils shrink in sync and tighten to let less light in. And by thinning and stretching the pigment in our irises, it brightens them. And smiles stay on faces even when we close our eyelids and there's no one there to smile back. Emma gets up to get a drink. And as I rush over to push her in, a chain forms behind and in perfect order, Marcus shoves me into the water as Raf shoves him too. The chain stops at Raf, you don't fuck with Raf, you don't ruin his shoes. It happens with all the purpose of a synchronized swimming team and the grace of a hen party mooning people from a pink limousine. The kind of grace I'm facing tonight. First time on the lash getting mashed with the big boys and no thought of the aftermath. I've been entrusted to Marcus and Raf. Except I must drink only half what they have, cause I'm little. And Raf, well he's always been my big brother. With shovels for hands, he can slouch to 6'8". His voice rumbles like the low notes of a double bass in a cave. He used to do bicep curls using me as a dumbbell. I'd cling to his wrist or get held by the ankle. Strongest man in the world, chest like an iron barrel. No kidding, I've seen him eat two cans of soup in one sitting. With three loaves of bread. Amused but not satisfied by the seemingly endless depths of his titanic appetite. Because food was just fuel to my sibling juggernaut. But no one's ever as big as Dad, despite what my brother thought. Dad once bustled him down the hall, tussling towards the front door, to the foot of the stairs, this leery, bravado-filled Mr. Know-it-all. Raph had sneered at his tea. That's not a meal. That's a snack. At the stairs, Dad had to climb three steps just to give him a slap. All right, kiddo says Raph. I snap back. Next bar then. It's next door but feels like a trek. Just going to the toilet's like walking on a train. The more I concentrate on my legs, the more the ground seems to sway. And my cheeks and my lips are now gone kind of numb. At least I can't taste the beer though. It's just wet on my tongue. So I move on to pints. Abandoning the plan, I tell Raph, I can handle it. This boy's becoming a man. We shake hands. I proper love Raph. I knew we'd understand. By bar six, the drinks are barely touching our lips and slip down our gullets chased by shots of vodka, tequila and something licorice. And now, we understand everything. We are wise men lecturing each other on the preposterousness of girls and then nodding and agreeing with our new philosopher selves. We are inspired minds brimming with enlightenment and stumbling round in bodies now surprisingly prone to violence until suddenly we're huddling over a table, practically cuddling. Marcus has departed, only me and Raph in the bar and some karaoke jokers, those wannabe pub stars. But then it's our turn and we watch the words blur across the screen, mumble something through the verse, but then the chorus kicks in. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. <laughs> then I'm leant over the side of my hotel bed, turning my insides out as I retch myself empty, getting more nauseous from the stench, and as I rest between spasms, I hear Sean ask, ever the detective, you being sick? I answer, no. He says, well, stop it. <laughs> Next morning, I'm timid. And Raph gives me no sympathy. But it's all self-inflicted, so I don't deserve any. Although, I'll learn from it after three days of vomit. I didn't know my limit, and I stepped well beyond it. But it's the maids I feel sorry for after my mess, the piles of the vile stuff. The smell's not gone yet. And I'm glad that Raph takes the piss. 
Because what else are brothers for if not to offer you greasy food when you're barely managing water? Well, you went out a boy, he says, and came back a boy, didn't you? <laughs> but don't worry, kiddo, because it's happened to all of us. And I smile at the thought of the army of pints Raph must have fought against to have not only lost, but to have been bedridden. And I find I'm still smiling when he's gone downstairs to dinner. Anyone ever been jealous of a friend? Just from a show of hands. Just me then? All right. I'm the only person who's like, oh, thank you. Good. If everyone's sat next to their friend, that's maybe why they're just lying. Um, but yeah, we're jealous for our friends for all different reasons. When I was 10, I was very jealous of my best friend, Kyle, who was 11. Uh, in this poem, I've renamed him Joe. Um, so he told me not to use his real name. Shit, don't tell him. Um, I was really jealous because he was allowed to do things I wasn't. He didn't have a bedtime. He was allowed to eat sweets and cake and things like that. Uh, he was um, allowed to watch 18 rated films when he was 11 years old, horror films and all sorts. I wasn't allowed any of that. I was really jealous, thought that he was dead lucky. Uh, and then this, this poem is the story of me discovering something through an act of his kindness uh, that made me reassess that and realize that I was actually the lucky one um, and teach me something about gratitude. It's called Horseshoes. Uh, it goes like this. When we weren't skateboarding off steps, or finding stuff in the street to make dens, or grinding duplay trains around impossible bends, the sound effects that spilled out our mouths as they entered our heads, it was stop motion Play Doh films. Painstakingly slow progress for a few seconds of thrills, or it was like when Joe said, when we were about 10, we should go to that field with two horses in and be sure to bring something to feed them. We arrive, they're on the far side of the field, not bothered, just being horses. We're like, Oi, horses! It seems they don't know they're horses. <laughs> Oi, horses! We hold up the carrots until they stroll over, grow taller with each step towards us, they're bigger. Joe says we'll ride him. And I figure he's joking, but he's already decided the big one's his and mine's no smaller. Now we both know. If you stand behind horses, they'll bookaroo kick and crack ribs like a cage made of matchsticks. You'll fly back, limbs flailing to a crushed guts crash landing. Plus, they can crunch off your fingers like carrots. One of us walks along the fence to draw the horse alongside, and as it passes, the plan is to jump, grab mane or hug neck and hold tight. Till thrown off, but hold tight. Because horses seem fun, they seem nice, but they're bigger than us. Dangerous too. I'm ready. No helmet, no saddle, just adds to the challenge. I picture legs veed and koala arms grabbing like Brave Star astride 30-30. Thick sheets of oiled muscle speak rhythms through skin. Like flesh warm plated metal, fluid as wind. Me, calm in the storm that will roar in my ears. It's time. I leap into the vacuum of silence and hit. The horse walks a couple more steps and then bombs it. And I'm on it for the space of four seconds. A ragdoll on a monster of iron made flesh, holding breath till I'm thrown off three seconds or less. Hit the ground, now I'm properly scared but alive. The petrol of horsepower pumping my veins, the adrenaline headiness of being brave. I stand up, look at Joe, stick out my chest. Yeah, I'm fine. It's wicked. You're next. We went different schools after primary. And it was a mission to visit his mum's with my bus pass, but at least it meant mine couldn't spy on me. Plus. It was more fun at Joe's mum's house. Joe was lucky. You could watch 18s there, and I mean all night. Horror films to enliven our dreams, indoor water fights, mattresses outdoors to sleep in the garden. The clouds stopped us stargazing, but we had crisps. Three kinds of sherbet and blackjacks to dip in it. Joe was lucky. But one time, pouring coke, I let go of the glass. And Joe sprung into action with dustpan and brush, and shh, maybe he didn't hear it, shh. The hot rush of fear, for me, unfamiliar. A door slams upstairs and we watch through the living room. Then battering boots clatter downstairs like galloping hooves and he's right there, his stepdad. Tell me you smashed the glass and why'd you smash it? Spit flicks, his tongue a whip, his mouth acid. Can only take it as an insult. A bead of sweat leaves my armpit, lines my rib cage. Now I'm frightened till Joe steps up, chest out and says, I did it. It was me. On the long bus ride home, I review things. Next time I see Joe, he'll be hiding bruises, the shape 
of fading horseshoes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. What a pleasure to have you here tonight. Can we get another round of applause, everybody, for Andy? Yes. All right. Our next part we have is from the Unspoken Bali Slam. Everybody, please welcome Julian to the stage. So I'm gonna read my poems it's about my addiction to, you will know. So, here you go. One, I don't feel it, let me try again. Two, I'm not sure, maybe I need more. And now they give me three. Okay, I want more. Four, what the hell is this? Five, feels weird, but it's good. Six, hell yeah, it's really good, I love it. Seven, ah, oh, I can't stand this, I need more. Eight, come on, just give me another one. Nine, please, 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 another one. <coughs> what, you only give me eight now? Ten, es nada. Eleven, no sentino nada también. Twelve. Can you give me more? Because now I think you're gonna be my last time. Thirteen? More. Fourteen? More. Fifteen. Please. Please, I'm promised. This is the last one. Sixteen. Perfect. Perfecto. This is perfect because I got one complete pack. For tonight. For now, finally, I had enough. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, now I'd like to invite Virginia up to the stage. She's gonna to talk to you a little bit about the Bali, un uh, the unspoken Bali slam. Virginia. Yeah, so um, I would like to say, uh, Thank you for the festival because the festival is like the place of birth of unspoken Bali poetry slam. Can we get a big shout out to this festival? Because um, the festival actually gives us a space of spoken word and then the people that's involved in unspoken Bali poetry slam is a, basically a community based project. We go around Bali and uh, introducing the spoken word. And uh, so we're so glad that uh, the festival always keep running the poetry slam. And thank you for Richard and the Barrett Bridge Foundation who keep sponsoring every year. Can we get a big applause for Richard? And uh, yeah, if you are in Bali until uh, the end of the year, or like if you live in Bali, uh, we will have a grand slam at the end of the year. So after we take from the cities around Bali, uh, two, two winners from each um, area will go again at the grand slam at the end of the year here. The, <laughs> yes. Hopefully next year Indonesia won't have the first national spoken word uh, championship. Now I think it's the the ready for the the winner, yes. Are we ready for the winners? Yes? You don't sound like you're ready for the winners. I'm ready for the winners. Alright, that's good. Our second runner up. In third place, please everybody put a round of applause for Steffi. Woo! Come on down, Steffi. And can I invite the judges to the stage, please? Let's get an extra round of applause for all our judges and our audience judge too. It's a really difficult job to be a judge. It's not, it's not an easy job, so they definitely need lots of encouragement. All right. Excuse First, me, can you just tell us a little bit about the judging and the rules for those of us who don't understand a slam? 
how uh, like the local language, the language of this country, Indonesian, how that is treated in Islam, if the judges don't understand Bahasa Indonesia, are they allowed to just give it shit numbers? Or, you know, like low votes? How, what are the rules for the jam? Because I feel something, I, I need to understand what the rules are. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, I appreciate your point, and we celebrate the country we live in. The slam uh, has rules which the poems must be either in English or bilingual. So, and we have we've had some very successful poets in the past that have spoken in Indonesian and then translated uh, into English and so on through their verses, which is very acceptable. Entirely in the of Indonesia, which I respect disenfranchises a very large part of the audience. So we're trying to be embracing, and there are the rules. And they're, they're very clear on the entrance. So I'm sorry if we offended you, but that's the rules. I have a request. I just wonder if in future, uh, if in future, if it can be provided a translator. Because this is, to me, there's like maybe a third or a quarter or a half the audience, I don't know, who are from Indonesia. I'm in this land as a visitor. Everybody who's white here, I feel, is you know, likely, and uh, just the language of this land, to me, should be number one. So if, if let's please provide a translation. I just feel colonialism, yeah, I feel really uncomfortable with it. Thank you, thank, thank you. you so much. We will take that into note and into consideration. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, so, okay. just, so people so, who didn't get a chance, so people who just spoke Indonesian yeah. cannot be number one, two, three, just so everyone knows that they've been taken out of this show, so it's been stacked to the English speakers. Just wanted to say this, okay? Thank you. Okay then. In first runner-up, can I bring to the stage Janice? Woo! Round of applause for Janice. <laughs> Steffi, come up on stage. Winners, come up on stage. Congratulations to the winner of the Spoken uh, Poetry Slam tonight is Jasper. Opportunity to say a thanks for the opportunity to get to share my poem because uh, yeah I did not expect to do that before I got here so it's my first time so thank you for listening to that and I appreciate it all.
Yeah, uh, if everybody has a little bit of time, um, I'm happy to re uh, perform another poem. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm a time filler. <laughs> this is a longer poem. Uh, it's a poem that I wrote for my son. Uh, who is autistic and um, this was written after one a very very difficult day it's called our beating hearts in the shadows of three colossal meltdowns my prince the apple of my eye he rests his weary eyes and sleeps and while his limp little body lands safe beneath the covers i'm still suspended feet bound upside down heart pounding echoing round him i weep my tears erode the fortress I believe was built of sandstone, reveal I'm only built of sand and so I crumble, tremble beneath my womb of expectations. I didn't anticipate the pain I cannot take away. I've been reduced to a bag of sand, dead weight, mustering only enough strength to create a wall big enough to contain all our tears, to keep the salt water privately rising in our own well so as not to disturb the neighbors further with the flood following the meltdown. My biceps flex only escaping steam evaporating strength my realization my cradle can my baby can no longer be cradled my cradle is breaking and when it is broken where will the apple of my eye land his breath serene mine a vibration a rapid rise a fall of fear and despair as i ask myself again where to from here and a buzz of swarming raindrops somersault down my cheeks one for every helpless feeling i lay unconvinced i will remain my prince's healer for every fist of frustration he threw at me and every kick he could not feel for every high five to my face and tooth embedded in my skin every object toy or tool he had hurled across the room I am the question and my actions mark if what I have done was right in his peaceful slumber the pieces still don't fit as I am criticized by my worst critique myself you're too hard on him, not hard enough. You pick the wrong battles, the ones that can't be won. You need more visuals, more routine, and then the killer. Is it his disability or lack of discipline from me? I survey his innocence through the wells, inhabiting the sockets in my face and question every choice I've ever made on his behalf. From food to education, routine, to the company we keep and his socialization, too many screens and not enough trees, too many treats and not enough greens, physical activity versus books and academics and reading and writing fluently, hope evades my grasp, floats on an elusive breeze, my hands were not raised to reach for, for that will mean removing a wall that I have built to protect the most precious fruit that I have bore. And if I can't protect him, then what? Have we lost? My instincts tell me failure is not an option when it is my child I am fighting for me. My senses tell me I must learn, dive into deep pressure, seek movement seeking skills, taste the reasons why and load my understanding to understand why his senses overload. Value the knowledge I have about meltdowns, melting down is not the focus. Focus is on the beauty of my beating, on my melting heart. My beating son, our beating hearts, my son. Thank you. That was the most awesome poem to finish this evening. It's like every single thing comes through you. Someone said to me, I think it was an old poet, poet called Hafiz, that a poet is one who can pour light into a spoon and raise it to my parched and holy mouth and satisfy a thirst I did not know I had. There's something in this place today which is very revolutionary that I see in this way. Evolutionary, revolutionary. In that way that we dare to allow everybody to speak their heart. Not from the pyramid paradigm of power, but everyone to come up, let love have its way and speak the heart in a beautiful play. Those who had passion, I did not understand the language, but I cheered for that. 
I'm a bliss junkie and I know what is true. And when we come together in this way, there is a possibility for the unity in our community because we hear everything from the heart, directly from that. This is the one heart party, but honoring each and every way. Hide not from the darkness of this day. Shiva Shakti, the sun, this moon. Be your own unique and godly tune. Hide not from the darkness of this day. Let the love rise. Have your say. And together we'll make a tapestry for a brand new day. Thank you.